Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. In this video, I wanted to share with you a really cool fish, and that is the molly. I know it's somewhat common, but it's an awesome fish. One of my favorite fish from when I was a little kid. We've got them in our 50 gallon low boy behind us. They're doing fantastic. They're breeding for us. There's so many different types. And if you haven't kept them before, or it's been a while, and you wanna add a lot of personality and a lot of activity to your tank, this is a great fish to consider, but they are often misunderstood. And I wanna take a few minutes in this video to talk about some of the things that are said about mollies that may not necessarily be true. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We do a lot of videos just like this on species profiles, water parameters, fish tank filtration, fish room, fish store tours. With 80 fish tanks in our fish room, we've always got something cool going on. Thanks for being here. So this is our Molly 50 gallon low boy. We started with about five or so, and now we've probably got 50 or 60 in this tank. And so I wanna spend some time talking about how we've kept them successfully. I know there's so much conflicting information on the internet. And again, we're just gonna share with you our experience. So mollies come from the genus Postilia. There are lots of different species. I'm not gonna cover them all. I just wanna cover the genus as a whole, where they come from. So they will be found in nature in the southern part of the United States in Central America. When we're looking at the water systems where they're typically found, there could be streams, rivers, along the coast, and brackish water. So they've got a lot of tolerance when it comes to water parameters. More on that in a moment. Now the size of these fish can range depending on the species, anywhere from around three inches. And in some cases, some species, the females will grow up to five. I've seen them almost as large as six inches. So some of these species can get quite large. The coloration is all over the place. And I'm gonna show you some different varieties, I promise, as we go through the video. But these are black mollies. There are Dalmatians, there's gold, there's different styles like balloons and lyre tails and all kinds of really cool looking fish. And I think that's one of the attractive features about these fish. Now their temperament, this is where things get a little bit confusing. A lot of sources will say that they are peaceful fish. I have found that depends on what you keep them with and how you keep them. I think if you've got a large community of mollies, such as we do in this tank, yes, they can be relatively peaceful. But if you keep them individually in a community tank that is a generally peaceful community tank, that's where you could start running into problems and that's where they turn a little bit more aggressive. So in my opinion, these are somewhat semi-aggressive fish, but in the right environment, they tend to chill out a lot, such as what you're seeing right now. Now, the coloration, the differences between the males and females, Coloration is not that much different, although I find the males have a little bit more color depending on the species that we're talking about. In some cases, especially with the sail fin mollies, it is the males that have that large dorsal fin that shows off and it's really super cool. And in the sail fin mollies, often the males will have considerably more color or at least some more color and that's, that's kind of cool. But both the males and the females can have some really nice colors. These fish can live for about five years. Here you're seeing some fish from some of the pet stores, uh, pet store tours that we have done before. I'll put those in the, in the uh, description down below. Now tank mates, here's again where things get very confusing because depending on how you keep them, they can be relatively aggressive. So what I would do, especially if I was keeping a small group of them, I would not put them with other fish that are very docile or have long flowing fins or any time where you can have the mollies chasing them around, especially if they're individual. So first thing, I prefer to keep them in a group. Uh, again, we started with, I think it was five or six, and we only had a couple males. I think there might have been four females maybe. So if you're going to keep them as a group, just like you would with maybe guppies or platies, one male for every two to three females would be ideal. Now, for in terms of other fish that you might keep them with, you could look at some neons. I would try to stay with the large neons, ones that are a little bit more uh, capable of handling different water parameters, like the black neons I find to be very hardy. Uh, Emperor Tetras are a really good choice. Even some ras rasboras like Brilliant Green Rasboras, por chop, Pork Chop Rasboras, Rose Lion Sharks would be pretty cool. They get along pretty well with White Clouds. And in this tank, we have them with Pencil Fish. Uh, there's Bristlenose Plecos in our 50 gallon low boy. There are Cory Cats in our 50 gallon low boy. They've all got along really well. If you're gonna look at garamis, I would stay with some of the less aggressive garamis, like maybe the honey garamis, dwarf garamis. If you get to the big ones, like the blues, the golds, and the opalines, that may be an issue later on. You could keep them with some more mellow types of cichlids. I've had success with keyhole cichlids, 
even Severums, some types of geophagus, the ones that stay a little bit smaller like Tapajos um, or maybe Altifrons, Wine Milleri. Loaches usually work pretty well, maybe uh, Electric Blue Acara. You could probably keep them with snails without too many issues. The big debate is can you keep them with shrimp? I don't, only because I feel like the adults prey on smaller shrimplets. Uh, some people have had success. I personally would not mix those. Now, let's talk about the water parameters because I think this is where the confusion mostly lies. You will hear people say, well, the reason why sometimes mollies don't do well is they really need the brackish water. I have found that's not true. I have talked to a number of people who I would consider to be pretty close to experts on live bearers in general. More on that in a moment. But these fish don't need additional salt, in my opinion. In our tank that you're looking at, the 50-gallon low boy, there is no salt added. It's a planted tank. And so our water parameters, where we're having success, we keep our temperatures in the upper 70s. Our pH is around an 8 to an 8.2, so it is a higher pH, and I would say that these fish can do well as long as you are on the alkaline side of the pH scale, so maybe 7.2 and above, that would be better for them. Water hardness, they do prefer some harder water. Now, our water is around 12 degrees hardness, so we're, we're getting close to that 200 parts per million, and that's kind of where they would really like to have that. And that's, that's some of the complication when it comes to tank mates because you want fish that can survive in that more alkaline environment. You want fish that can survive in that slightly harder water. And so just keep that in mind. Uh, water quality overall should be good. So no ammonia, no nitrites. And again, when, the, when it comes to the salt, will they do fine in a little bit of extra salt? Yes. Do they need brackish water? In my experience and the experience of the experts that I've talked to as part of the Chicago Live Bearer Society, their answer has been no. My experience has been no. They don't need additional salt, but they certainly won't be harmed by it for, by any stretch of the imagination. Now, sometimes you will see these are fish I feel like you have to be extremely careful when you're going to a pet store and you're picking them out. Look very closely at the tank. Make sure they're not doing what I like to call the death shimmy or the death wobble where you've got, and this is especially true with the mollies where you see them and they're kind of got their fins clamped up to their sides and they're doing kind of like a shimmy or a shake towards the top of the tank. These are fish that just aren't healthy. Now, why is that? A lot of people say, well, it's because the salt concentrations aren't high enough. I have found that these fish are just prone to just bad water quality in general. They're prone to stress. In my opinion, they're actually more prone to ick than other fish that I have kept. So you just want to make sure that they're healthy. So no, don't, make sure their fins are not clamped together. Make sure they're not doing that shimmy. Make sure when you bring them home, these are fish I think are especially important to quarantine. And I've done a video on quarantine. I'm going to put that in the upper right-hand corner. I would absolutely quarantine mollies when I bring them home. I quarantine all new fish, but mollies especially... Uh, just because we want them, we want to make sure that they don't develop it and spread it to the rest of your tank. All right, so what do we feed our mollies? We feed them a variety of foods. We are sponsored by Northfin because we really, really like their foods. So Northfin flakes, Northfin pellets, uh, they love that. Uh, in addition to the flakes and the pellets, we feed the 50-gallon low boy live baby brine twice a day because we have so many offspring, and the adults love it too. Uh, we will also feed frozen brine shrimp, frozen blood worms. They like that as well. Interestingly enough, we found that our when we kept sailfin mollies, they actually consumed a lot of green hair algae. And one of the reasons why we put mollies in this tank in the first place, as you can see, we do have some green hair algae in this tank as well. And I was hoping the mollies would eat it. And it turns out they'll pick at it, especially the fry will pick at it, probably because there's microorganisms and small pieces of food in there. But they don't necessarily eat the green hair algae as much as our sailfin mollies do. So some mollies will eat green hair algae, others will not. So just kind of keep that in mind. But they're, re they're really relatively easy to feed. Tank size, this is another area of controversy that I see. It's all over the place on the internet. For me personally, I would not keep mollies in anything less than a 29 gallon. One reason for that, again, because the sail fins get very large. And some mollies, especially if you keep them in a small group, they can be somewhat aggressive. And so for me, I would like to keep them in the largest tank possible. And so my minimum is a 29 gallon. I think they do much better. So this 50 gallon low boy is four feet long. It's 24 inches wide and it's only 10 inches tall. So it's actually a shorter tank than maybe I would even prefer for the mollies. But 
the larger the tank you can do, the better off you're going to be. Uh, the decor you can see here, we've got live plants, we've got sand mixed with some pebbles, rocks, a little bit of driftwood. They do really well here. Now when it comes to filtration, for this tank we just have an air stone uh, because we more or less run this tank as an unfiltered tank. We're allowing the plants in the ecosystem to filter it. I don't recommend that at all for beginners. If you've got a hang on back or sponge filter that's allowing you to keep your ammonia and nitrites at zero, you're in good shape. When it comes to breeding these fish, it's been relatively easy. They are live bears. The males have a gonopodium. The females will hold their fry for somewhere around 30 days or so, and then they'll start to release them, and they can have a lot of fry at once. Sometimes we'll see a, a dozen new fry in the tank, so they will release them over time in fairly large quantities. Now, another area of controversy is will the adults eat the fry. I did a whole video on how to keep fish babies alive. I'm going to put that in the upper right hand corner, but I have found that if you keep your adults well fed, you're not generally going to have as big of a problem, especially with these fish. And we don't, we have a lot of top cover. We have a lot of plants and decorations between that and keeping our adults well fed. We've never removed the fry. And as you can see, they are surviving. Do some go missing from time to time? Probably but we still get quite a few, so I'm, that's not really a concern that I have. And we are gonna have a lot of videos down in the description below. If you want more information on tank mates, that would be a great place to look. I will put a couple of videos here in the upper right and lower right hand corner so you can check out some good tank mates. Appreciate you watching, and if you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.